If your teacher is using the Piano Safari method, you might have come across these sight reading cards. Now, it can be difficult for you to know how you can help your child with these at home. And even if you did study music, things are gonna look a little bit different. So I wanna talk you through them today, give you some tips on how to best help your child practice these, and talk through each of the levels from A to F. I think beyond level F, you'll either understand them well enough that it won't be a problem, or your child will be able to do them pretty independently. But they do need a lot of help in the beginning, so I'm here to talk you through each of those levels from level A to level F. Okay, so first things first, we'll deal with level A, right? Makes sense? So in level A, students are working just with finger numbers and only on the black keys. So up the top here of the level A card, you're going to have a right hand part, then a left hand part, and then the rhythm down the bottom. So you're not meant to do all of these together, they're separate things, and that's true all the way until level F, all the cards we're talking about today. So the right hand is first. When you're helping your child at home, what you wanna do is look at those three black keys, point to those, say to your child, okay, can you find where that's gonna be on the piano? Hopefully they'll get ready with their two, three, four on the three black keys, and then they can play through from there. Now, if you don't mu read music, this might all like look like gobbledygook to you in the beginning, but you absolutely can learn along with your child with this kind of stuff. So don't be afraid of it. There you've got four what, what we would call tas and then ta two. So those are the ones with white in the middle or a gap in the middle of the note. And those are minims in this part of the world or uh, half notes if you're over in the US. And what they are is just a longer note. That's all it is. So encourage your child to either say the finger numbers, two, two, three, three, four, two, or the rhythm while they play. Ta, 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 two, ta, two. Either one is a great way to practice and you should mix those up and alternate a bit, of course, following the recommendations from your teacher. The next thing you have on every card is a left hand and on the level A cards, that's gonna be just on the three black keys again with the other finger. So again, point to the picture, encourage your child to find their place on their own, depending on their age. They'll be able to do it more or less independently. And then they're gonna play through this one. So this one goes. And again, get them to say the finger numbers, the rhythm, whether it's going up or down, ask some questions about it. And if your child is struggling with any of these cards, I highly encourage you to point for them. Some of the time when children are struggling with music reading, what it really is, or general reading, what it really is, is actually just a tracking issue. They haven't really gotten used to tracking from left to right. Seems like a simple thing to us, seems natural almost, doesn't it? But it's not, it's something we learn to do. So you're gonna point, if you're gonna point, stand beside your child on this side and point from above. So you can point down with a pencil so that you're pointing to each note as they go through. And you could do the same thing for each one. And then when it comes to the rhythm at the bottom, you can look in the front of the Piano Safari book that'll show you what we call these different types of notes and either tap it and say it or just say it with your child. You can do clapping if you like, mostly if you have an older child. Um, but at a younger age, I would advise not clapping, unless that's what your teacher is recommending. I would normally go for either just saying it, especially in the beginning. So just saying ti 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 ta ta, or doing tapping on your knees, what we call patch. Ti 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 ta ta. And do it together with your child so that they can feel it. You'll probably be better in the beginning, even if you've no musical training, you'll probably be better, be better than your child is in the very start um, at staying steady with your speed. So you can encourage them along with that and help them to stay steady. Okay, level B, next level. This is where we move onto the white keys. Very exciting. And here your, your child is starting to understand the different keys and where they're located on the piano. Now they may or may not be good at this yet. So you might need to give them a bit of a helping hand. You'll see up the top of the card with the right hand part, it now says where to begin. Instead of showing a picture, it's gonna say right hand or H right hand one, on G. So there's two steps to that. 
well, there's kind of three, right hand, that they get the right hand, not the left. One, one finger, that's the thumb if you're not aware, on G. So now they need to find G. Now, the way I teach the piano keys, and this will vary from teacher to teacher, but it is sort of based on the C, D, E and F, G, A, B songs in Piano Safari. I teach students to find them from C or from F. Okay, so if it's a G, I'll say with them F, G. Okay, there's G. And the point being it's F, G, A, B. If you want to start from A, that's fine. It's just quite hard for students to find, for young kids to find, because um, there's two sides to choose from. Um, so F, G, and then they put their one finger there. Encourage them to make a round hand. I'll often call this a Zachariah Zebra hand because I introduced that a little bit earlier than the book does. So if your ha child hasn't met that yet, just encourage them to have a round hand shape and bounce from their arm. We always want to have a little bit of a focus on technique. Even if we're really thinking about reading, that's fine um, for the most part. But just setting ourselves up with the intention of having good technique is very important. So from there, they're going to play it. So this one is right hand one on G. I've got my round hand shape and I'm going to bounce from the arm. And that's the right hand part. Then we get to the left hand part. The left hand starts with four on C. In this card, it will be different on every single card. So we have to figure out left hand finger four, you can talk them through each of these stages, and C. So they need to find the C key, which is here, beside the two black keys. And then we play, again, getting them to say the finger numbers, the notes maybe, the piano keys, or the rhythm. Ta, 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 do, ta, 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 do, ta, 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 do, ta, 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 do. Again, if they need help with tracking, Keep pointing from above, that's perfectly fine to do. And we've got a rhythm at the bottom which works exactly the same as the level A card, so I won't go into that again. Now, on to level C. This is a really exciting time for your kid because they are now reading on the staff. And this might be the moment where if you don't have any musical training, you're going, yikes, I can't help anymore. I don't read music. Reading music is not hard, I promise you. Yes, it takes practice to read fluently at the piano and there are various stages, but just understanding the basics of it, that's easy. You can do that. Any adult can, I promise you. So there's two different lines here. Again, this is right hand and this is left hand. The top one is the treble clef and the bottom one is the bass clef. So treble clef is for high notes, normally right hand. Bass clef is for low notes, normally left hand. With me so far? Piano Safari starts with single staves, meaning that they aren't hands together. They aren't joined together. They're not playing at the same time. They're still playing one hand by itself. And it begins with just what we call steps and sames. Step is just going from one note to the next. If you look carefully at the note heads, ignore the note stems, look at the note heads and notice whether they're going down or up or staying the same from note to one note to the next. That's what we call steps or seconds in music. And that's how students are reading here. So if you do have musical training, this is where you're sort of at a disadvantage because you're going to be confused by this method if you learned a different way. I have some parents come to me and they're, they really want to help their kid, but they really don't get not naming every single note. And the thing is, when we work down, down the track, when we've gotten to a certain stage, it all looks the same. Whether we started reading note names or we started reading intervals, which is that second that I'm talking about there, those patterns. In the end, I believe it looks basically the same in terms of a fluent note reader. But reading note names first gets us there slower. That's just a fact. Yes, you can get there, absolutely, by saying each of these G, F, E, D, but it's actually much more natural and easier in the beginning to just learn a couple of notes and to work from there in steps or skips in the next level, sames, those kind of patterns. So that's the way we're approaching reading here. Now every, every, every 
uh, sight reading card from here until level F is going to start on the same note in the right hand or the same note in the left hand. And that is for the right hand, that's treble G. You'll notice it's the same one on every card, although the finger number changes. So this one starts with five. You can see the finger number now above the note on G. So it's in this position. It might also be like this or this or this or this but it's not going to be a different note. It is exactly treble G every time until you get to level G. <laughs> so that is where that note is located. If you're looking for it on your piano, it is the G just above middle C, which is middle, the closest C to the middle of the piano. On a upright piano or a grand piano, it's probably going to be pretty close to the writing of the brand on the center of the piano. So that's middle C, treble G is just a bit higher. The left hand always starts on bass C. So the next one down from that middle C, bass C. That's where all of them start. And in this case, it starts with one, but it could be one, two, three, four, five, but it's always going to be that note. So if you can remember treble G, bass C, that'll help you find your way around. And that's how your child is finding their way around as well. So the right hand part here, we've got, we're just reading the patterns here. So we're starting five on G and then we read down, 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 same, 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 up, 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 same, same. If your child is having a little bit of trouble with this beginning reading, some kids just get it and some kids need a little bit of help. It all evens out with all the other things going on in the end. This is just one aspect of learning to play the piano. But if your child is struggling with this particular thing, try going through with them and having them say the ups, downs and sames. Also try that pointing technique that we talked about earlier. The left hand on this one goes same, down, same, down, same, same, same. And then the rhythm on this always gets a chuckle out of students because it's just all TTs, T T T T T T T T T T T T, etc. Um, that's just on the first one in level C. Okay, level D. Are you ready? This is where we talk about skips. So pianist Fari spends a whole unit and a whole set of sight reading cards on level in level C or unit three in the book on steps and sames. Now they're going to look at skips and sames. So they're very, very methodical in how they approach this, which is important. So they're going to look at skips and sames, no steps anymore. You can identify a skip pretty easily because it goes from a line to a line or a space to a space. Like with like is either going to be a same or a skip and you can pretty easily tell the difference. If your child has already gotten used to level C and reading in steps, this is going to not, it's usually not too much of a struggle because they understand the patterns and it's just a matter of reminding them that these are skips now, right? So is this a step is something you might have to ask. But other than that, generally, they will get, get this pretty fast. It's, almost, it's easier to see whether it's up or down. So they don't even have that hurdle at this stage. The thing they're actually dealing with is going skipping a finger when it skips a note on the staff. So the right hand here again, treble clef, G. It always starts there and it's five again here and we go down down same same up up same same down down same same up down that's it and then the left hand again starts on bass c bass clef c and we go down down up up down down up up down down up up Now, at this stage as well, you might want to encourage that round hand shape. Don't fuss over it is what I would recommend at this stage. But if you just remind them at the start of each sight reading exercise, I think that's good enough for now. Okay, level E. This is the last level that correlates with Piano Safari book one. Um, I'm going to go one further than this. We are going to go into book two a little bit. For level E, what we're dealing with is steps, skips and sames. Okay, so we've mixed up the two now and they're working all together. It still always starts on G. And I'd recommend at this stage that you go through with your child and have them point to each note and tell you whether it's step up, skip up, step down, skip down or same. So I would literally point to each note and go G, skip up, skip up, same, same, skip down, skip down, 
same, same, step up, step up, step down, step down before they play it. If they're doing fine with this and they're progressing okay, you might forget about that. Of course, consult with their teacher and see what they want you to do. They may also want you to color the cards at home, but I'll leave that up to each individual teacher. So here's how the right hand goes for this card. And then the left hand. Again, encourage that round hand shape before they begin. Okay, so that's level E. It's getting exciting. There's a whole mix of things and they're really reading so well at this stage. Of course, the rhythm on the bottom is the same. Okay, we're ready for level F. Well, I am, if you are. You may wanna, by the way, keep this video and refer back to it as your child progresses through these levels, but it's good to have an overview of where they're headed to. Okay, so level F is similar in a way to level E. There's not massive differences in terms of the reading. The intervals are the same, steps, skips and sames, or seconds, thirds and sames. And the starting notes are still those two landmark notes. So you've got G and C. Those are still the same. They will change in level G. But what is included now is two extra things. One is the articulation. That's this line over the top here, or these dots. So this means legato, smoothly, it's a phrase line or a slur. And the dots here are bouncy notes, staccatos, whatever you wanna call them. So they're incorporating those as well. If your child is still struggling with reading a little bit and seeing the patterns, encourage them to do that on the second playthrough, not on the first. You don't want too much going on, but if they're already going okay, if they were good at level E, then you can absolutely do the articulation on the first go as well. So I'll play through these two and then I'll talk about this rhythm because that's a little bit different too. And the left hand is staccato or well, some staccato notes here. Okay, and now I'm gonna close the piano lid to show you the rhythm here because it's easier to see what I'm doing if I tap here rather than my knees. You can do it on your knees, absolutely. But the top line here is for um, the right hand and the bottom line is for the left hand. So the way this works is we tap the left hand, taps the bottom line, right hand taps the top line, and we're counting at this stage. So we're using metric counting, which means no more tas and titis, although they can still come back to them when they need them. But we're using this metric counting, which means we count up to four in every bar if it's four, four. So this would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three, four. One, two, three, four. If your child is having trouble with that, I'd encourage you to clap or tap together the right hand part first and the left hand part and then put them back together again. And of course, ask your teacher for help. Okay, so those are the first six levels of the sight reading cards. I really hope this video has been helpful so that you can help your child at home. You have no idea how much of a difference this makes when these are practiced properly at home. It is one of the foundations of reading in the piano safari method. And it is so, so vital that you help your child along if they need help. And most of the time they do, even if they think they don't. So I hope that's made it clear. Please leave any comments below and I'll be happy to help you out, point you in the right direction, that kind of thing. Chat to you soon.